Hey, welcome to the shop. Today we're going to do some MIG welding on thicker steel and look at two different ways to do it or two variants of the process. One of them is the short circuit transfer mode and the other is spray transfer. Now, short circuit transfer is what most people who are running MIG welding in their home shops are doing. That's where you get that bacon frying sound. And this happens because the wire actually short circuits against your material, an arc starts and then it goes out and that process repeats over and over again. Spray transfer on the other hand, the arc is always lit and the wire transfers over in small droplets. And this is a much hotter process which can be very beneficial on thicker steel, both for higher productivity and also you can get better penetration. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut some pieces of half inch thick hot rolled flat bar to use as my coupons. And I'm just cutting them here on the new Evo Max saw. I've made a lot of cuts with this thing and I've been really impressed. I mean, it's 11 seconds through that half inch thick bar and then it's cool to the touch after it's done. Now I'm gonna remove the mill scale off of these just so that I get the best chance here and eliminate one uh, additional variable. And I've been using these purple strip discs off Amazon. They're pretty cheap and they work pretty well to uh, remove that light mill scale without getting into your material. And I prepped three sets, one for spray transfer, one for short circuit, and one in case I need a do over. I do wanna give a huge thanks to HTP for providing the equipment to make this and some follow on videos on some thicker material. So this is their new MiG 2800. It's a 300 amp machine. I have some 045 or 1.2 millimeter uh, wire loaded, just solid wire. And one thing I really like about this machine is it opens up to MIG manual when you first turn it on and you just have a knob for wire speed and a knob for voltage, just old school. And if you never want to get into a single menu, you don't have to. But if you do, it has about every option available, including pulse. Now I'm going to use the chart on the door in manual mode to set this for uh, the short circuit run. I just wanted to show you a few things that really stood out about this machine. I really like the drive roll mechanism with these dual rolls, the physical buttons to feed your wire and to purge it, and this window on the outside right here so you can see how much wire you have left. Now we're ready to go and as I'm moving along here, notice I'm going about 45 degrees into the joint and a slight push angle. And now I'm using a very slight circular motion but never leaving the puddle. And if you look at the front of the machine, that top left number is amperage. We're right around 250 amps and right around 24 volts. And that seems to be running pretty good. Though I could stand to have slightly less voltage and I think I think uh, that would reduce my spatter and the main reason that uh, this is probably the case is because I'm running a little bit hotter gas than 7525. I'm running a 90% argon, 10% CO2 blend. We'll talk about that in a minute. But overall, not too bad. I think it'll hold. All right, now we're going to switch over and weld with spray transfer and there's a few things you need to be able to do this. One is a machine that has enough amperage and voltage to be able to actually run it. And two, you need to have the right gas mixture. So 75% argon, 25% CO2, that's the most common uh, mixed gas, at least for short circuit MIG, isn't gonna work very well for spray transfer. You can get it into a spray, but it's really not ideal. So I'm running 90% argon, 10% CO2. And this is a great blend because it can run both short circuit MIG and spray transfer. So I'm using 90-10 for all the welding. So this is a hot, intense process. And I propped with my left hand vertical and started to have instant regret just the heat coming off of this thing. Well, my glove was smoking after about an inch and a half. I had to stop. So uh, I'm going to be taking a mulligan on that one. So they have heat shields and things for gloves, but I don't have uh, one of those. So I've just found a different way to prop that I think will work good. And it, it proved to be pretty good. Now notice I'm using a push angle here once again. With spray transfer, you really do need to run a push angle whenever possible. Um, notice it's just like painting on this weld metal here. There's very little spatter. Everything runs really smoothly, but it is a hot and intense process. Got a nice smooth result and I think it'll hold. 
All right, let's take a little look at what we got here and then we'll cut a few cross sections. So here, this is the short circuit MIG, this is the spray transfer. And when we're looking at the profile of them, notice you have a bit more of a convex profile, meaning that the center of the weld is uh, you know, protruding out just a little bit more. That's gonna be typical with just about any short circuit MIG that you're gonna have that because it is an inherently colder process. So also notice right here, we have a bit more spatter uh, with the short circuit MIG, especially when you start running these higher amperages on short circuit, you get uh, a bit of spatter where here with spray transfer, it's completely spatter free. Now let's take a look at the weld size. And uh, I was shooting for a quarter inch fillet. The size of fillet weld you need depends on a lot of things, the design of the joint, how it's loaded and whatnot but I'm looking for a quarter inch uh, fillet weld here. So this is a fillet weld gauge and um, it has two different sides. One side right here is to check the leg length or, or how far the corner is from that uh, other plate. And then also it has a side here to check the throat in case it's a concave weld. The throat's obviously gonna stick out a little bit more on these. So we're really looking um, to use this side of the gauge. And if you look, it's real close to a quarter inch, just a hair over. So, so I'd size that at a quarter inch and you have to check both sides. So here um, on the bottom, it's a little over, a little over quarter inch, but pretty close. Now let's look at the spray transfer. It's a little bit bigger, just slightly over a quarter inch. Let's go ahead and take a look at the penetration on these welds. So I've hit it with an acid etch. So that light etched region is weld metal on both sides. This right here is the short circuit MIG. And you can see a little better in cross section how it is slightly more convex, but it's still an acceptable weld bead profile. And notice on the vertical plate, there is really good penetration deep into here. On the horizontal plate, it's not quite as deep uh, as it is on the spray transfer, but it's definitely subsurface and certainly gets in past the uh, inner corner of the joint, which is usually the requirement. So here on the spray transfer, um, well, you can see that more flat weld bead profile and the penetration is a completely different shape. It goes a little bit further subsurface into this horizontal plate. It goes a little bit deeper here on the vertical plate and continues down deeper into the joint. All right, well, we we're able to get a sound weld with both short circuit transfer and spray transfer uh, on this half inch thick plate. Um, what are some of the factors to consider when you're trying to decide how to tune your process, whether you wanna run a short circuit or spray transfer? Well, one, uh, are you welding in the flat and horizontal position? Because if you're welding out of position, spray transfer isn't, isn't gonna work. Also, are you able to get the right shielding gas and a machine with enough amperage to run a spray transfer because you're gonna need that. Now, if you don't have a machine with sufficient amperage for a spray transfer, you need to test your process on short circuit and make sure that you're getting enough penetration because sometimes the welds can be deceiving when you're running that short circuit MIG. Once again, a huge thanks to HDP for providing the equipment to make these videos on thicker material. If you are interested in any HDP machines, check out the link down in the description. Um, if you do purchase through that link, it does help support the channel at no additional cost to you. And uh, I always appreciate that. Thanks again. We'll see you next time.